Yeah. I came up with the idea like this morning. Like we should talk about NPCs. Yeah. Then you're like, do an outline. I was like, okay. And then I wrote like a seven page essay. Did. That is pretty fucking accurate. <sighs> I have a lot of thoughts on NPCs. It's okay. it's okay. For one thing, what does it stand for? Non player character. Because for a long time, I heard non non playable character. I'm pretty sure it's non player. Is non playable a video game thing as opposed probably. to a tabletop thing? Yeah. Well, there you go. That's There's what one, I'm going to go with. I'm going to give that answer like it is correct. <laughs> I'm going to say it with absolute confidence so I'm nobody questions me. I'm going to say it with authority. Until they find out I'm a woman, then they will question me. <laughs> they will question everything. Well, not, 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 not. Fuck! <laughs> this is bonus experience. Hey, we're bonus hey, experience. I'm Monica. I'm Ray. And this is a podcast with a deeper look at the play experience and the finer details of running and writing games. We are queer women speaking with authority about games and the origin of video game phrases. Um, we're queer women speaking with authority about one of those things. One of those things. No, you spoke one of those with things. a lot of authority earlier. I did. It was fake authority. Oh. Um, and we, but we also swear. Faux authority. Die mad about it. <laughs> and also while we while we have you p- before you die mad <laughs> please before please, you die mad please leave us some good reviews yeah, on itunes some good reviews. on um other places that exist i'm sure but i only yeah. use itunes so it's fine if you want to use something else that's okay i'm not gonna judge i you. keep saying on google play but i actually have no idea how to give a good review on google play so. just review us wherever it was that you found us leave a comment <laughs> yeah if you can figure out how to leave us a good review uh do the thing yeah or you can just like yeah. add us on twitter like send us a thing on twitter like hey yeah. keep up the good work yeah we'd be very <laughs> affirming you. if people twatted at us also don't forget you can click on our how to give us money page on our website oh, and yeah. buy all our rad products which will benefit the show in like a really direct way because yeah, having a podcast don't? isn't free, as it turns out. Like, it costs, like, a little bit of money to do it. Yeah. I'm and bummed. And, hey, if, if you're not into the stuff that I work on, which is available for sale on Drive Through RPG, um, you can just keep the affiliate code in the link and shop for whatever you feel like on Drive Through RPG. Yep. And we yep. still get the money. Or if you want to, you can just, like, send us money on Ko-fi. Ko-fi? Yeah, buy us a coffee. A coffee? Buy us a, a coffee. Buy us a coffee. It's like a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. it's a really little bit amount but honestly like two people buy us a coffee that's like that's our, our server. server cost nope. <laughs> and we're good if, we're and, like if people if, if people buy us regular coffee then we can buy more server space and we can do longer episodes or more episodes or have longer, space to do more, more dumb shit. episodes like actual plays yeah 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 we're considering doing some actual plays have you heard about actual plays have i it's this new thing it's a new thing. Not a lot of people are doing it yet. Okay. Right. <laughs> Where Tell me you, about it. You play the game All right. while you record it, and uh-huh. then other people like listen to you actually playing it. Oh, hey, did you know I did this in like 2009? What, really? Not yeah, really. <laughs> Should we like plug that? Is that. No, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. Then why did you Absolutely bring it up? Absolutely fucking not. <laughs> um, I, no, I, I would record my Exalted games and um, play them live on my friend Michelle's art channel oh. before, like, regular APing was kind of a thing. Like, this is pre-Twitch. Oh, dang, that's pretty cool. Yeah. And, like, that's neat. Um, mostly just my friends tuned in, but hey, people hey. still listen to it. Yeah, I mean, mostly just our friends listen to our podcast. It's very true. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Today we're talking about NPCs. We're going to talk about how to design them, how to use them, and how to fuse your essence with them so that you become one entity. Um, and maybe this is going to become a two-part episode. It, yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> I wrote, I wrote quite a lot of notes here. 
Yeah, usually these episodes, uh, a lot of BXP episodes are me talking an awful lot and Ray kind of agreeing with me. <laughs> um, and in this case, I think this is going to be Ray talking an awful lot and me agreeing it with It turns her. out that a lot of this intersects with just plain old writing. And I haven't had a chance yet to really talk about the Venn diagram where just fiction writing and game design intersect. But I think that's a really important thing to talk about later, but especially now we're just going to talk about basically making characters. Um, so what I, uh, it also sort of reads a good bit like a like a drama lesson, like an acting class. There's some acting so, involved in, in making yeah, NPCs. Yeah. So, you know, buckle up because neither of us studied drama. Yeah. Wait, did you study drama? No, uh, a little, actually a little bit. <laughs> Okay. Okay. But not not the not the 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 facing forward side. I studied the the stage managing and the script writing side. Oh, okay. Probably not. Well, the I same. mean that's 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 important to care. Yeah. So I guess since I'm going to be doing all the talking, you can yeah. like um I'll do the questioning. Yeah. Like you you usually do the questioning. Yeah. You got this. Yeah. Okay. Let's see if I can do your job. <laughs> um, <laughs> So, tell me, what makes a good, air quotes, NPC? Well, I put it, I put it, I, the air quotes are important. It's kind of an objective okay. thing. I like an Great. NPC. You mean a subjective thing? Yeah, that that's what I said, because Margaret's going to... It gonna is not, but carry on. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Margaret will fix it. Margaret fixes everything. <laughs> I like an NPC I can actually interact with. Like, okay. you know, fuck with, manipulate, deter, or convince something that I as a player can actually, like, exercise my agency upon. Um, which isn't to say a good NPC is a total pushover, but there should be some way in which my character can influence them. Even if it's just me getting on their shit list. Like, I hate that fucking guy so much. He comes over and then the NPC decides he wants to kill me. It's like, hey, I've actually made an impact on that character. Here he comes to try to kill me. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, no, I got you. I got you. Uh, I, also, um, I also like an NPC I can freely romance or otherwise get into a complicated relationship. I like oh, yeah, NPCs. Same. Yeah. I mean, you've seen me do it. I like NPCs. Uh, uh -huh. I, I've encouraged you to do it. <laughs> yeah, you've just kind of like tossed them at me. Um, I like NPCs that get entangled with a player in a messy way that will definitely come back later. The like oh no, or or hell yes, it's that guy kind of an NPC. Yeah, no one gets to kill you but me. Yeah, or hell yes, it's my good friend, the guy I rescued in the forest. He's back to, you know, like, I like recurring dudes that can make a splash. Yeah, we have a good working relationship as player and GM. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so basically what you're saying is that you like NPCs that are, you know characters yeah <laughs> a fleshed out character with interests and dislikes and emotions I, yeah i like an npc that has the potential for depth doesn't necessarily right, have to yeah. come to the table with all that depth but i like an npc also, that has the potential I, to do that right well they should have like a personality and shit yeah i'm also pretty sure there's an apocalypse world principle for this yeah i'm pretty sure like the first thing you have to know when you make an apocalypse world npc is you got to know what they want and that's like yeah. it. Like that's the only thing you attach to a character when you first make it is they got to have a need of some kind. And I think that's a really, really, really good way of looking at a character that's going to come into contact with your players. I, th I, th I was thinking of the principle that says something to the effect of like, um, breathe life into everything. Yeah, that too. Yeah, you don't want to just be like, well, I don't know. I'll, yeah, I'll get into like, that. It's, it's, you know, give it's every in moderation. Yeah. But I mean, I, mean, I think there's room for background characters certainly depending on the scope of the game um and we'll get into tone and scope in another episode yeah um and also like all your points can't really argue with those i totally agree um i think an npc should be a character with personality and some degree of realization um obviously there's no need to imagine what every barkeep's favorite food is but like have an idea how they might react to being intimidated coerced or seduced yeah some idea yeah some idea like, even and if it's a vague, like, they're tough. <laughs> like, okay, right, then maybe yeah. they would resist it, because they're tough. Like you, Yeah, you might have a vague idea that, like, the barkeep here was a, a war veteran, and is in this in because he, that makes him happy, and so he's going to respond aggressively to being intimidated, you know? Yeah, have an idea of it. Yeah, have an idea. 
So let's talk about the best way to use an NPC, mm -hmm. or also how it's possible to misuse, air quotes, an NPC. All right, so <laughs> NPCs. <laughs> <laughs> NPCs have purpose. They aren't just a diegetic mouthpiece for the GM. If you find that your NPC only exists to deliver your personal thoughts and rules within the narrative, you may need to put it to a better use. I mean, most NPCs are basically just sapient quest givers. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's true. So a lot of them are. Yeah. Um, but, like, they should have motivations and stuff. Like, just talking about the apocalypse world thing where, you know, what does a character want? Yeah. What do they want? Um, why are they doing this thing? Why are mm -hmm. they giving this quest? What will they do if the PCs decide not to do the thing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what, what, what if the PCs choose to do something weird with the quest? <laughs> right, yeah. Oh, what if they cause too much collateral? Um, coming up with what a character will do in response is almost as important as the plot. Right. Um, and it's, it's on my mind because I'm running Monster of the Week actually tomorrow. Um, tomorrow? Two days from now. Um, tomorrow is Friday. Giving Saturday, two days from now. <laughs> I, I can't time very well. Um, I'm running Monster of the Week soon, um, and they handle something similar to this. Um, giving your NPC NPCs a role or a motivation will help keep you on track. Um, this can be as simple a motivation as be suspicious of the PCs, or as complex as collect one last easily missed human sacrifice for the ritual that will raise my dark master from the grave. Um, the actions they take will all point to their motivation. They don't need to be fully realized until the PCs like turn their microscopes to them. Yeah, it makes sense. Um, in my Through the Breach game, I had um, characters had several interactions with a, a basically sapient quest giver <laughs> um, who, was, who was named Lorena Martinez. So, you know, I gave her a name. Um, uh, she was a, a guild sergeant who had been rewarded, air quotes, for her good work with a desk job and hated every <laughs> second of it. Uh -huh. <laughs> Though they never sat down and asked her what she'd rather be doing with her life, they enjoyed interacting with the beleaguered woman who took issue requests and handed out payment. I mean, she more or less just literally told the PCs which adventure hook we were using next and how much money they were going to be rewarded for it, but she, like, had a personality and shit. I like the idea of a kind of a genre savvy quest giver like she doesn't want to be fucking doing this there's so many other things she would rather she wants to be out there doing it but she's like yeah there's some fucking bandits in the forest <laughs> here's, yeah, well they were specifically the working for like the military government's um monster hunting department yeah and she was like a monster hunter who was super good and they were like hey you're doing a good job here's a safer th position here you go <laughs> <laughs> shit i did yep. too good of a job and like, had they they decided to stop pursuing taking monster hunting contracts after a while and chase down some more interesting stuff? Um, so like, she's not currently a character on screen, but there, I definitely had a, a a tent pole that went to the cutting room floor where like, if they had pursued something to a certain point, um, she probably would have showed up to save them at some point later. Ah, oh, nice. Which is not going to happen anymore. She but. finally gets out from behind that desk. Yep. <laughs> I, I have an example from um, when my husband ran his first uh, D&D game, and okay. he was he was still getting a feel for the power levels and how to plan out the dungeon crawls, um, so he created, like, basically a deus ex machina NPC that was a dungeonologist our party would meet inexplicably right before every final boss fight, um, and this person knew enough about the dungeon, like, flora and fauna that they could make like healing tonics and shit and get us like a full rest right before we would go and have this big fight exegetically Ooh. hey hey exegetically the mvc existed to give us a reset and to allow us to fight a final boss and survive in case the new gm like underestimated the strength of his encounters he was like a safety net this character diegetically we later found out the npc was actually bahamut in disguise like a literal deus ex machina and he just wanted to like indirectly assist us in our fight against all these evil dragons it was some cool shit sweet yeah that's that sounds pretty cool that's having like this npc has a purpose whether you know yeah. at the time it may have seemed simple like oh we just happened to find this guy who like heals us great there was actually like a whole story tied into it it was awesome um i have some bad 
like vague examples because right, I on. don't like to name names all the time. Um, I've right. played in games with NPCs that were all extremely suspicious and clever and perceptive, and we could we could never get anything past them. We could never convince them to help us. We could never manipulate them. We could never get them to actually be helpful and useful. They were all just brick walls or deterrence, and it was a <laughs> fucking nightmare. Um, I've also played in games with NPCs that go overboard on the quirky and uniqueness, like. Uh, and that's its own nightmare to interact with on top of these characters basically being of no use to us or the player characters. Um, they would just show up, confound us in some way, act strangely slash humorously, and then exit the scene. It it just didn't make any fucking sense. Um, so, like, the GM just wanted to troll you a little? Yeah, the GM is just having fun fucking with us. And... I mean, you can listen to like our other 12 episodes for why this is fucking stupid. <laughs> like, don't just don't just fuck with your players for the sake of it. At least, you know, let them get something out of it. Yeah, I mean, that just sounds like some 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 bad basic jamming. Yeah, Let's, that sounds like someone needs to go and listen to episode one. <laughs> it's someone who needs to just <laughs> brush up on it a bit. Um, I, you know, I almost all of my gaming experiences have been with Henry as the GM and he's pretty, pretty good at it. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. That's so good. I can't really say I've ever had the experience of like a GM specifically putting in a bullheaded NPC. That's not going to help at all. You know, that's, that's just there to be an asshole. Yeah. I, I think, never had that experience. I think in both of those bad examples, that was the GM treating NPCs as just their own like personal avatar of like I'm I'm fucking fed up with what these characters are doing and letting it be expressed through this NPC which I isn't mean, that's a bad way to do it only villains do that you don't you solve out of game problems with in game solutions with any character problem yep, yep you were correct yep though you did tell a story about the one time I did that what she's gay oh <laughs> <laughs> yes, but that became a solution to my problem, <laughs> which was I didn't have an NPC to romance. <laughs> so really, when you think about it, aren't all problems solutions in a way? <laughs> I like romanceable NPCs. <laughs> oh, man. You've made it. Welcome to the mid-episode break. Hey, did you guys know that bronchitis is like a real thing real people get and not just some funny internet joke? I don't know about you, but I've got next to no time for that. What's up with bonus experience? Well, we're traveling a lot. We're getting sick a lot. We got a lot of deadlines. We're both writers and we're in deadline hell. These things happen. We have a couple of filler episodes coming up with Monica talking with pod husband Henry, mostly to deal with the fact that me, Ray, has bronchitis. <laughs> and I sound like garbage. Also, Monica's going to be at Metatopia, the game design convention. It's a whole, it's a whole convention for game designers. She's going to have some interviews done on the fly. Please continue to email us your war stories. We would really love to have a whole episode devoted to all the crazy shit you guys get into in your games. It seems like... Role-playing games are just like a like a generator for crazy bullshit. We also got a request to talk more about character sheets, complete with like these beautiful handmade, like hand-designed custom sheets. I have nothing but respect for people who can pull that stuff off. I am not a graphic designer, but absolutely we will talk more about character sheets in the future. Anyway, that's all. I'm going to stop talking for a while because probably doesn't sound very good. And let's go back in time to when I sounded much better. So let's talk about some good techniques for playing NPCs. Yeah, um, I think character voices are super important. If you feel comfortable with that, um, even if you don't feel comfortable with that, you should get comfortable with that. <laughs> um, don't feel like you have you to go full matt mercer on it like it's right you're not a voice actor yeah none, none of us are unless, you are unless you're matt mercer and the other people right, or another voice role. actor yeah um yeah. All, all you need to do is change your regular speaking voice enough for players to realize you're talking through someone else 
like reading a storybook to a little kid. Like you don't have to yes. like do a great job. You just need them to know when the dialogue started. Um, just make sure the trick you pull matches the character you're portraying. Or if it doesn't match, you have a good reason why. Um, things that I like to do that are not just like accents or funny voices. Um, you could stop using contradictions or use way more contradictions. Contra and I, in, parentheses, I've, <laughs> in parentheses, I've written... <laughs> which is <laughs> I think you mean contractions. You said contractions. Did I say contradictions? Margaret? Yeah, you sure did. Twice. Hey, Margaret. Did I say really? She's, she's, she agrees with me. <sighs> Shit. All right. Well, she'll she'll get it later. Um, yeah, okay. Con she'll con just contractions. say the word contractions and she'll just edit it in real obviously later. <laughs> Beep! Contractions. <laughs> Anyway, if you use either stopping using contractions or using way more, um, it might indicate the Galvindor. kind of person this character is or where they might be from. What's their job? Are they some sort of university professor who sounds like a hillbilly? Could be. Or some like rich snob who's actually a big fucking idiot? <laughs> or are they a robot? Um, are they a robot? Well, could you imagine someone like I was trying to flip the example on its head. <laughs> my um, my husband had his appendix removed by a guy with a really deep South accent. He was talking about popping that sucker right out of there, <laughs> but he, he was a surgeon. <laughs> like, yeah, throw out your prejudices. Like, if it if right. if it can make it memorable, go for it. Uh, what else? You could um, you can talk like a little kid, like really simple short sentences, or repeat yourself a lot. Or trail off at the end of most sentences. You just kind of. I point out that like <laughs> doing this really indicates your character's sort of mental state. Yeah, yeah. Like if your character talks like a child, maybe there's something wrong. Maybe they're a monster that's childlike and embodying a sort of thing, or maybe it's it's a deception. But like it's it's playing at being innocent. Right. Um. Or maybe it's literally a kid. Yeah. Um, I I, I if... had a a little I had a blue dragon whelp. That talked like a little kid <laughs> that didn't understand the concept of sharing. No, these are mine. Basically, yeah. <laughs> they were trying to teach it to be good. It was cute in the that um, they thought that they could teach it to be good. <laughs> I don't think there could be anything more evil than a child dragon. Kids can get nasty, is what I'm saying. And I think that a chromatic dragon whelp would probably be the nastiest thing that I could think of. But once you teach it to be good, it'd probably be okay. I'm sure it'll work out in the end. Um, also, like, a character who trails off on the top all the time is probably flighty or forgetful. Right. Or traumatized in some way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, stuff like that. Um, yeah. Uh, the way you talk can indicate things that are unspoken. Yes, exactly. Um, and if you're having trouble thinking of something clever to indicate any of this, you can always just fall back on cliches. Like, there are, there's a reason that they get used so much that they become cliches like oh this is an orc he's gonna grunt this is an elf he's gonna simper <laughs> you know use what you gotta <laughs> to make them you know immediately readable i mean cliches are a thing because they're immediate easy to understand shorthand and i think it's perfectly fine to give your nameless or faceless background characters broad characterization i would just warn against doing that for like real people yeah don't be racist yeah don't be racist <laughs> Don't racist. Um, I <laughs> elves can simper. No one's ever oppressed an elf. Elves aren't real. They're not. They're not real. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, for some reason, all my goblins are from Brooklyn. <laughs> like anytime I have to voice a goblin, I fall into. And I know. Th I know the reason. The reason is Warcraft. The reason is because every goblin in World of Warcraft had like this terrible like Jersey slash like deep Brooklyn accent. So now I... every goblin is. Every goblin is like big city northeast. Kind of love it, but why? I don't know, but it does work. Okay. <laughs> you could um you could code switch if you're multilingual. You could like for a character have them switching back and forth between a couple of different languages, which isn't uncommon in real life. Um you could use a lot of slang. You could use really outdated slang. Um I think those would both say a lot about your character, like where they're from or how they like approach other people. Um, I did. We did play Warbirds, which is the game set um, like a World War II era alternate reality Earth. Um, and I looked up specific jazz era. Not not okay. No, it's jazz era. It's not um, 
the 40s. But I looked up specific time period appropriate slang and made yeah. a list. And we, yeah. we like picked things off of it to have our characters say. I fucking love that shit. Or, or become <laughs> catchphrases. Yes. Hot yeah. Diggity dog. <laughs> So yeah, I have some I have some practical experience with that. That was the that was the player characters, not the NPCs. But like, hey, that that applies. Yeah, um, you, there's a lot of different ways you can do this that don't come down to like physically like changing your voice or using an accent or anything like that. It's you know you can just use different vocal patterns, different word choice, um, body language, and props can also be real important. And I know Monica has already like talked about how awesome this can be um but i i once scared the shit out of an entire party um by playing a socialite and just just fucking nailing the body language like they all assumed she was some like powerful mastermind who could destroy them before she was done swirling her wine i think all it took was like i had a little knowing laughter and i called them all darling and they all like without any dice hitting the table just assumed like okay we can't fuck with this person because they just assumed <laughs> that she, like, had everybody on a string and knew what she was doing. So then I had to, like, go back and kind of modify that NPC and actually make her powerful. Because <laughs> they assumed so much. And I was like, sure, okay. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, like, she is now. <laughs> yeah, now she's super cool. Yeah, I've, I talked about doing this before, like, using small props, like, the character that, like, fiddle coin. Um, I, I think in, in, inhabiting a character physically is, is very important, especially for distinguishing difference between people. Yes, um, yes. Sometimes that can even be a difference of how you sit in your chair. Mm-hmm, yeah. Like, do you lean back casually and, like, you know, spread your chest out broad, like, like in confidence? Do you hunch forward? and like lean on the table um like do you do you fidget with your hair or your pencils um do you sit still do you sit with energy like all of these sorts of things you know tell who the character is here's where it get all acting class (laughs) yeah (laughs) yeah (laughs) um i also once scared the crap of someone in a like a one-on-one scene with the way i a um skinny young woman uh inhabited chup kajak oh really yeah that, really for people who don't play exalted <laughs> that's like an old like ancient like kung fu master kind of a guy like he's like the on the list of like the big bads he's like and he is the de- big bad he's de- he's depicted as this like ripped old man yeah 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 like every kung <laughs> like, fu master you can think of mm-hmm. in one scary motherfucker yep the, the mastermind behind like everything a, a dude who made really hard decisions ketchup card check ketchup project Sh- sheds up couldn't shake stop <laughs> <laughs> i um and and you know it's gonna take acting kind of silly and feeling kind of weird and kind of being out of your comfort zone for the first couple of times but this is one of those things where the reward is way greater than the effort you put into it. If you're just doing like a little bit of voice and a little bit of character acting, just that is going to be enough for your players to be more engaged with that character. They're going to have, you know, more, more of a picture of what they're dealing with. Um, I've done some very, very silly things to embody NPCs. Um, again, in an exalted game, there's a lot of like spirits and small gods and things like that. Um, cause it's almost like a, like an animist kind of a world. Um, it's my, definitely an animist world. Yeah. My, my characters got involved in a turf war between the local, uh, goddess of squirrels and the god of jays. Um, and the jay god set up straight with his chest out. Well, you know, me, basically I'm doing these things. Arms crossed, like stroking his chin. And every time he ended a sentence, he would end it with, ah! so <laughs> that is extremely silly. <laughs> that's sitting here telling you about that. And later as I'm editing this, I'm going to be like, God, that's fucking dumb. But my, my players loved that guy. Like in, in this turf war, they sided with him. They're like, we want to go with that guy. He's awesome. And yeah, it was dumb as hell. And I felt really dumb at the time, but it, it ended up being like a really great part of the game you, you got to kind of like push yourself out of there at the same time though you should try to play to your own strengths if you're not able to accurately or comfortably portray the character then don't feel bad if you need to tweak the character before they actually arrive at the table um and just to be a little bit of a theater snob for 
God's sake, if you can't do an accent, don't. Yeah, d- just don't. Just it's don't, okay. seriously. It's okay. <laughs> just just be like, he has a thick English accent, and then say whatever he'd say. He has a Scottish brogue. I can't fucking do a Scottish accent. Even right, if yeah. I'm reading Scottish tweets phonetically, I can't fucking do the Scottish accent. <laughs> just so nobody in my games have Scottish accents, or I'll just say, yeah, he's got an accent. If I can't do the Scottish accent, I just won't accent. fucking do it. It's just don't as do simple it. as that. Remember that your imaginary world is as diverse as the real one. Characters should be tall, short, fat, lean, muscular, curvy, brown, black, other fantasy colors too, uh, gay, trans, poly, etc., yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, all of these, 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 these people exist, and they should exist in your world too. They should absolutely. Should. There's no reason why the people that intersect with any of those adjectives wouldn't be involved in these adventures. It's not like only straight white people go on adventures. Right? I would hazard that straight white people go on the least amount of adventures. <laughs> kind of, because we don't really fucking have to. Um, do we want this to be the two-parter? Yeah, we can have this be the two-parter. Because uh, I gotta go make some donuts. All right. <laughs> I love you guys, but I gotta make some donuts. Do you want to come back later? Yeah, we can come back later. Because the next because... one could be a full episode. It's basically like how to make NPCs on the fly. Right. Join us next time for yeah how to make NPCs on the fly. It's a lot more than tables. Yep, we're gonna talk the rest of, of, of more about NPCs in episode thirteen and a half. 13 part 2, 13 part 3. Can we just call it 14? (laughs) I guess we can call it 14. Well, like, this is 13, 1, and 2. Whatever, fine. 14? What? Episode 14 is the second half of the NPC discussion. Sure. Okay. Right. So find us on our website, bonusexpcast.wordpress.com. Yep. Email us, bonusexpcast at gmail.com. Follow us on Twitter, at bonus exp cast what a surprise you can also follow me personally on twitter i'm ray underscore cole and you can follow me personally on twitter i am at zenith sun so i gotta go make donuts so everybody get out oh, okay bye. get out Toot it if you want to Thanks for listening. Bonus Experience is written and produced by Monica and Ray. Our theme music is Reuse Noise with the Light by CDK and is used under the Attribution Non-Commercial Creative Commons license. Our logo and art were designed by Nito Studios. Check her out on Instagram and Facebook. This podcast grants advantage to your next GMing role. We'll see you next time.